Good evening, everybody. From North County, San Diego, Los Angeles, and virtual space, welcome to the 18th annual Cal State San Marcos Student Media Festival. Tonight is a celebration, thank you, thank you, of all kinds of media you made on campus, at home, in our communities, and in augmented and virtual space. And welcome, everybody. I'm Christine Diekman. I'm professor of art, media, and design. And my name is Jonathan Berman. I'm another professor of art, media, and design. It's been so great watching all the entries this year, Christine. Yeah, and Professor Berman and I will be hosting tonight's screening together. Congratulations to everyone who entered the festival. It takes a lot of courage and work to submit your entry. We had 40 entries, and from those, a jury of faculty, alumni, and professionals selected 19 outstanding films, videos, and VR and AR projects for you to see tonight. Our audience tonight is composed of student media makers, professionals in the field, professors, staff, friends, family, alumni, community members, and viewers just like you. At the end of the screening, we'll have an awards ceremony giving top honors and cash prizes to some of the most innovative and thoughtful work. We also have the coveted audience award. And if you looked in the YouTube chat at the end of the screening itself, you'll see a link to a ballot for this award. So make certain you take a look at that and we'll also uh, let you know when that gets posted. After you watch all of our outstanding films tonight, you'll have a chance to go to this link and vote for your favorite film or video. Yeah, and we'd like to thank everyone involved in the festival. The festival awards are supported by the Funes Fund, established by Carolyn Funes to honor her late husband, Don. Don Funes was one of the founders of the Visual and Performing Arts Department, now known as the School of Art. We also want to thank our support staff, uh, Albert Rascone, who is running our show tonight, Chad Huggins and Kevin Coleman, as well as the professors in the Art, Media and Design Department, who have mentored our student, students, some of which are here tonight with us in the Zoom room. And we'd especially like to thank our jurors. They looked at almost 40 entries and chose films based upon content, creativity, and technical prowess. It's a tough job as there were so many amazing films. Now let's meet some of our jurors who volunteered for this tough task and we'll acknowledge them at the end of the, our introductions. So along with Professor Berman and I who are on the jury, we have three invited jurors. If you don't mind turning on your cameras and waving hello, we will definitely cut to you. We have uh, Jeffrey Ray, professor in digital media based, uh, digital based <laughs> media artist. Uh, there's Christopher Cox, who is a CSUSM alumnus and sound wizard at KOC TV. And we have Shannon Pringle, director of the CSU Media Arts Festival. So let's give them a virtual applause. The films we're about to view today were made by, oh, yeah, thank, thank you guys. Uh, the films we're about to view were made by students across our campus. And they explore many worlds such as wind and our moods, epic old English poetry, longing and desire, cultural identity, and memory. And they also look at boy bands, pizza, video games, and a whole lot more. The official competition entries will be screened without an intermission tonight. Afterwards, we will introduce the students who made the films. And remember to stay tuned until the end for our award ceremony and your vote for the audience award. We'll announce when that link to vote is live, so stay tuned. And now, where's our drum roll, Albert? <laughs> and, thank you. And now, it's our pleasure to present the 18th annual Cal State San Marcos Student Media Festival. Have fun, everybody.
My name is Bella, I'm 21 years old, and I'm obsessed with Super Junior. I really like their music videos, how the members interact with each other, and dancing along to their songs. I first found out about Suju from the Kev Jumba video when I was about 12 years old. I heard the song Mr. Simple and I really liked it, which caused me to look up other songs to repeat over and over again too. And I thought that was it until five years later in my senior year of high school when I started to really get into it. I found out about Bella's obsession when she started collecting merchandise. It all started with one album a few years ago. She left to go to Japan for a week in 2019 and I thought it would end, but when she came back, she brought home a lot of stuff. It was shocking. I want to say something, but she doesn't know I live here, so I just deal with it and hope I don't get crushed someday. I see and hear Suju basically every day. My alarm in the morning is Suju. My phone wallpapers are Suju, my posters are Suju, my clothes are Suju, my backpack, calendar, mouse pad, car keys, drawing references, I think you get the point. So then I checked his Instagram, and he actually stole my memes. I was really surprised. Well, your grades in social life are fine as far as I can tell. You're also getting some exercise whenever you dance. I suggest diversifying your interests because that just means more possible sources of inspiration for you. I agree because I found something that I really like in Suju and a community I can belong to. I guess I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. I am learning that just because it is cultural doesn't mean that it is sacred, that sometimes the village needs to apologize. Every day God is born, who finds himself in human form. He denies himself to find true wealth within. In his tribe, his health is prized possession. Sin is diverting from the rugged path that leads to the truth that he is I and I am we.
Our traditions and customs need to change. And most times, you have to believe the child when they show you where it hurts, when they tell you to name their pain, when the name for their pain can't be found in your language but in your silence, when their pain is the very reason for why you have no other choice but to speak.
You may enter. Morale is down and we need you to do something about it. We have a motive now. We are in need of a disturbance. A disturbance? What do you mean? The balance is soon to shake this war. Reach forth to the lands where warriors of light shall be. The Templars will aid you eventually to ensure your experience on this quest goes well. And that is to maintain the safety of a noble's daughter. Seems easy. Kidnap a princess? Take her back to home plate? Blackmail? <laughs> Doesn't sound hard to me. Right on the money. Be off with you. how the adventure was doing. Oh, Retro, uh, what are you doing? You're supposed to be there. Thank you, man, for saving me. Who was that? I think it was the Black Knight. How strange. I've never seen him before. Here, let me help you out. Uh, yeah. He came out of nowhere. I know. Why would he be in the forest? Huh. What's over there? Huh. Strange. Some sort of cleansing material. Why would this be in the forest? There's a possible idea. And who are you supposed to be? Let the man speak. The ash I found was buried near that mound. Seems suspicious if you ask me. Ashes? What kind of madman would burn them alive? Yeah, yeah, I know what's going on here. It's them goddamn cultists.
Hi, Bella. Hello. So, what first got you into drawing? I grew up watching a lot of cartoons, so I drew pictures of the things I liked and developed my own style over time. In class, I would do my work, but at the same time, I had a notebook or loose sheets of paper on the side just to draw on. You like cartoons, so do you also like video games? I've played video games since I first learned to use a computer, and I've really been into this one Japanese crime drama series lately. It's fun, and maybe I should start drawing more of it. How about music? I listen to a lot of different kinds of music, especially while I'm drawing. But I've specifically been a fan of a Korean boy band for about five years now. I've participated in the fan culture for a long time. What's up next for you? I've got to finish up all my finals and also draw some more. All right, thanks for your time, Bella. No problem. My heart is looking for you. It looks for you in the busy cities, and the empty ones. It looks for you in different sets of eyes, mouths, fingers. My heart is looking for you. It looks for you in made and unmade beds. It looks for you hopeful. in the flower fields and pink skies, it looks for you stubborn. Sometimes it goes so far. have to find a new place to be from. My heart is looking for you. Hope you find it.
Greetings, and welcome to the first episode of Bella's Modding Adventures. My name is Bella, and today I'll be talking about my journey through video game modding, specifically how I virtually inserted myself as a playable character in the game Yakuza Like a Dragon. Firstly, if you don't know what modding is, modding is slang for modifying, or changing aspects of something to create something new. Video game modding has existed for decades, and the changes can range from minor edits to revisions which alter gameplay entirely. Anyone can participate in this modding culture, whether they simply install something that someone else has made, become a fan of someone's modding work, or even create mods themselves. So, how did I get into modding? What inspired me to even start? How did I build a story of my own character to fit into the Yakuza universe? All of these questions and more will be answered in this podcast. When I was younger, I played a lot of little educational video games on my PC, even figuring out how to install them by myself. My gaming journey officially began here, but I remember getting an Xbox 360 for Christmas and playing Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga with my brother, making me characters on the Wii, and taking care of virtual pets on my Nintendo DSi. Nowadays, since newer games are no longer made for the old consoles, I stick to PC games, going back to my old ways. In the middle of 2020, a deep fake meme spread around the internet where characters with distorted looking faces would sing along to a Japanese song. That song was Bakumitai, also known as Dame Dame. <laughs> I was curious about where the song came from and found so many videos about the Yakuza series. Months later, on my 21st birthday, my dad bought me my first Yakuza game on Steam, Yakuza Kiwami, a remake of the very first game. While playing through, I was hooked onto the series, 
enjoying the way that the strangeness and seriousness of everything fit together just right. I played through the rest of the series as the games were released on PC over time, meaning I played the seventh game, Yakuza Like a Dragon, just before the ports of the third through sixth installments. Eventually, I came across mods on YouTube of the games, swapping models and cutscenes, changing outfits, and editing character fighting movesets to name a few. I was mesmerized and wondered how it was possible to do those kinds of things. At the start of the summer of 2021, I had a revelation. Hirameda. What if I put myself into a Yakuza game? The series has plenty of cameos of real-life people, and Yakuza Like a Dragon has an option of playing with an English dub. Let's start a brand new age of heroes! Yeah, I'm with you, Ichiban. Someone putting themselves into the games, as far as I knew, hadn't been done before. I thought, this is what I'm going to do during the summer. I knew it would be a lot of work since I knew basically nothing about how to even start. On May 20th, 2021, I began by creating a 3D model of my head using FaceGen. I took photos of the front and side views of my face so that the program had references. I found and joined the Yakuza modding Discord for tools, inspiration, and a source of help if I needed it. The community provided extensive documentation of the files of the games, and since I played them on Steam, I could navigate through them to discover new things. I thought about which of the seven playable characters I could replace in Like a Dragon, and decided on Eri Kamataki. I'm Eri. I'm president of Ichiban Confections. A powerful, optional party member with office supply-based attack skills that I constantly kept in the active party once unlocked. With my limited skills, I thought to just replace her character's head with mine and leave it at that. However, little did I know how ambitious I would become. I brought my generated head into Blender, a 3D program that I had never used before, and imported the file for Aerie's head. I changed the scale of my head to fit hers as much as I could, and borrowed her neck, eyes, eyelashes, and inner mouth. I was learning all of this as I went, and it was like performing surgery with Google as a reference. I had to learn about bones and weights so that my head would even begin to move correctly. On June 6th, I successfully exported my first attempt at my head. All I had to do was import the files into the game and load up a save. However, the result was absolutely horrifying. My head was still way too big in-game. My mouth could not close correctly, spikes were coming out of my right ear, and neck flesh poked out of Aerie's outfit. I had created a monster! It took three days of attempted mouth weight corrections and troubleshooting to finally get my head mostly working properly. During that time, I found a hairstyle and character job outfits that I could alter to fit my character better. A few days later, I decided to explore audio files and character data where I would find the dialogue for things like battling on the street THE BATTLE IS ON or exploring the open world. Man, my back is killing me. I changed my character's height from 170 centimeters to 155 centimeters to match real life. I gave myself glasses and earrings and replaced text instances mentioning Aerie's name with my own. I went further beyond by using Audacity and the microphone in my room to record my own dialogue for several days. I first recorded lines for following the main character in the open world. Dude, slow down a little. Don't leave me behind. Then, once I was done, I recorded my voice for battle, providing unique dialogue for the different special skills associated with character jobs, such as the base clerk job for Aerie, Hey, we're really counting on you. And others, such as idol, We fight this with love. Dealer, Let's take a gamble. Hostess, An ashtray for you, sir. And Night Queen, You fool. The Night Queen job in particular is out of character for me because I'm just too nice for it. I did a lot of yelling in pain to simulate status effects too. No! I made an outfit to replace Aerie's default one. I gave myself a blue sweatshirt over a white collared shirt, black pants, and grey shoes. Even while replacing everything, Aerie's face was everywhere in the user interface. I decided to create custom character renders, putting my character in the loading screen, character profile section, victory screen, job change screen, and more. I added parts of my personality to my character, but it was still not enough to define myself as a believable character that could actually exist as a member of the protagonist's party. I decided to plan out my character's story and give myself a little profile. Of course, my character is me, but to what extent? I defined myself as a digital artist from San Diego, California who always loved to draw, 
was fascinated by video games enough to put herself in one she liked, and joined the party as a possible source of drawing inspiration after encountering the group while visiting Yokohama for the first time. I taught myself to model swap my character over others for the purpose of recording cutscenes for fun, such as for karaoke. On August 26th, I realized that I wanted a fighting moveset that acknowledged my love for dancing, my fan enthusiasm, and my drawing skills. Eri's office supply skills could pass as drawing supply skills for myself, but they weren't really me. I tested replacing character moves for the first time, turning Eri's ink bottle skill into meme dance, in which I did the floss dance to steal an enemy's magic points. Are we fighting or not? I found attack skills from street enemies and other party members that I liked and made them work for myself. Finally, on August 28th, I created a final job change from clerk to digital artist, making a brand new moveset involving dancing, fangirl skills, and physical attacks with drawing supplies. Moves include Super Fan Scream, which I blast enemies away with a megaphone, <laughs> Bella's Essence of Breakdance Delight, which I damaged the enemy with dancing skills, <laughs> Fan art drop, which I slam a pile of fan art on an enemy's head. Time to die! <sighs> and more. My mod was finally complete after 100 days. I asked my dad about what he thought of my mod, and this is what he had to say about it. I just think your game mods are awesome, especially since you added yourself into the game. You basically start from scratch by taking a selfie of your whole face. I was very impressed with the outcome. I mean, your mods absolutely like there were no changes to the game except that you are in the game. Everything pretty much flowed with the game. Overall, I was especially impressed that you learned how to do the mods on your own. He watched basically everything from start to finish, including the weird parts. I thought it was hilarious seeing all the different updates with funny results like the proportion of your character's head to the body or eyeballs bulging out. Now that was funny. I taught myself so much and learned as I went, not knowing what I was capable of until I actually started doing it. I feel proud of myself for accomplishing this, although I don't know if I want to release my model to the public. With my newfound skills, it became possible for me to make other mods very quickly, mostly focusing on cosmetic changes for the characters. I would play around with what I've created and then record clips of the gameplay to edit and post them how I wanted online. Maybe RGG Studios will notice my unique achievement someday and put me in the next game. I don't know. That concludes today's episode of Bella's Modding Adventures. Tune in next time to hear about how I made the character Jow into my own personal dress-up doll in the game. Oh, this oughta be good. At any point during the ride, you become disoriented. There's nothing we can do about it. Who the hell are you? The question is, who are you? Really a body, I think it's, it's 
some kind of transport unit for something else altogether. The question is, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Your entire image is cracked. Your entire image is cracked. Who are you? Who are you? Excellent question. And the answer you're looking for lies right here. Oh! 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 Why do you think you're so comfortable here? Who are you, really? I am just a figment of your imagination. Forgetfulness by Billy Collins The name of the author is the first to go, followed obediently by the title, the plot, the heartbreaking conclusion, the entire novel, which suddenly becomes one you have never read, never even heard of. As if, one by one, the memories you used to harbor decided to retire to the southern hemisphere of the brain to a little fishing village where there are no phones. Long ago, you kissed the names of the nine muses goodbye and watched the quadratic equation pack its bag, and even now as you memorize the order of the planets. Something else is slipping away, a state flower perhaps, the address of an uncle, the capital of Paraguay. Whatever it is you are struggling to remember, it is not poised on the tip of your tongue, not even lurking in some obscure corner of your spleen. It has floated away down a dark mythological river whose name begins with an L as far as you can recall. Well on your way to oblivion where you will join those who have even forgotten how to swim and how to ride a bicycle. No wonder you rise in the middle of the night to look up the date of a famous battle in a book on war. No wonder the moon in the window seems to have drifted out of a love poem that you used to know by heart. I'll say my father. He was, um, he was a giving man. He, he gave all the time, the whole family loved him. Mm. Even when he disagreed with you, he would disagree, and, but he would, he would be there when you need him. You know, that, that guy is with something else. Mom, are you sure that when I was born, I was born a person and not just a vortex? Always hungry. Always swallowing.
sometimes. I can even hear my bones straining under the weight of all the lives that I'm not living. I didn't really know. I had no idea how greedy my heart was. What I am aches in me. No matter how much I take, I always end up empty. Fairburn police found 30-year-old Tiante Jones dead Saturday night. She was previously reported missing. Police say her ex-boyfriend shot her, then turned the gun on himself. The search for Felicia Johnson, who has now been missing for 11 days, gaining national attention. Anna Yelly Star Ruiz with joins us live news. from Houston We've Police following all day the latest on the investigation. Anna Yelly. Where police now say a missing person case involving a 10-year-old girl is now a murder investigation. Tonight, new clues in the search for Heidi Plank, a Los Angeles mother last seen more than two weeks ago. I miss my friend. <laughs> Our number one priority a is family, finding a Heidi. And a community is stepping in, trying to find a missing East Point teenager tonight. 17-year-old Zion Foster was last seen at her home last Tuesday. Family members feel Woman. she is being It's a tragic ending in the search for Kathleen Seven Moore. And tonight, the Pasco Darren County Cunningham Sheriff's Office says she is search. dead. And they have arrested her boyfriend for killing her. Investigators say Kathleen was a victim of domestic violence. It's a parent's worst nightmare, not knowing where their child is or if they're okay. Here in East Point, 
A mother is approaching a week of not hearing her child's voice. In 16th century Scandinavia, there lived a tribe of warriors known as the Danes. Ruled by their leader Hrothgar, they resided in Herit, a hall of great importance. However, trouble would be a normal occurrence for the Danes, with the monster Grendel, a being of incredible strength, routinely kicking the shit out of all of them. against Grendel. However, hope would come in the boastful warrior Beowulf, who, upon hearing of Grendel, would leave Gotaland to provide his services. Arriving in Harret, Beowulf would present himself with great dignity. said Ernfirth. I, Beowulf, warrior of the Geats, have arrived to save you from your incompetence by defeating the creature known as Grendel. Incompetence? Didn't you lose a swimming match to your friend Brekka? How can you defeat Grendel when you can't even swim? <laughs> Angered by their laughter, Beowulf retorted for... In a modern context, Unferth would essentially call Beowulf a punk bitch. You dare doubt the mighty Beowulf? I'll prove you all wrong. And so, Beowulf and his men went off, searching for Grendel to uphold his honor. defeating Grendel without any form of weaponry, Beowulf would return to Herit. Not without a souvenir, though. Before Beowulf could act, Grendel's mother would retaliate. <laughs> Having vanquished their mortal enemy, Hrothgar would praise Beowulf. You've done well, Beowulf. Here, take this medal as a token of gratitude. Yeah! Yeah! Fuck you, Beowulf! Returning home, Beowulf would become king, ruling over the Geats for years to come. Years later, trouble would come when a fearsome dragon would attack Beowulf's kingdom. With his domain in ruins, Beowulf would vow to slay the dragon without any assistance. After 
a fierce and epic battle, Beowulf would be victorious, but at a cost. In his final moments, Beowulf would tell his friend, Wiglaf, I lay here dying, but I am content. I have proved that I am not a bitch. And so, what have we learned? Have we learned about the power of strength and nobility? Quite frankly, I don't know or care. I'm being paid to narrate this, laughing my ass off. Just a second. Come on, you're gonna be late. Let's go. Did you eat anything? No.
Ew. Okay, everybody, that's really powerful work, everyone. I'm always really amazed at the diversity of our student work, which I think really speaks to how original our students are and how they craft their own vision. So let's give everybody a hand to acknowledge their efforts. <laughs> okay, student filmmakers, it's time to turn your cameras on. Okay, so the link to vote for the coveted audience award is now live. So make sure you vote for your favorite film while we introduce the filmmakers who will speak briefly about their work. Right, and um, so it's live in the YouTube chat, but also we should put it in the, um, I think in the uh, Zoom um, chat too, if we can, Albert, just to make certain that people who are in Zoom can also go ahead and do some of their own balloting. Um, so there student filmmakers, so thank you so much. Um, please, everybody, uh, turn your cameras on. The audience would like to meet you and hear about your films and videos. And uh, leave them on during this part of the introductions. And when you hear the title or the titles of your film, your camera should be on. And please turn on your mic, introduce yourself by name, and say a few words about your film. So, um, Well, now good. we can meet the maker of my weird obsession, meet Bella. And Bella's moding adventure. Please introduce yourself, Isabella. Hello, everyone. My name is Bella Tabernal, and I, when I was making my word obsession, I wanted to make a parody of reality shows such as My Strange Addiction, but make it about something that I liked something just emphasizing an interest for Meet Bella. It was something similar, but in an animated form, interviewing myself and my talking about my love for cartoons, music and video games, as well as boy bands like Super Junior. And finally, for Bella's modding adventures, what started as a little summer personal project for myself became the episode, the first episode for a possible podcast series, which I'm considering continuing. Great. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much, Isabella. I would love it. I can't wait to see the next podcast. Um, the next one is the uh, next person is uh, the filmmaker of appearance. Deja, could you please turn on your mic, your camera, tell us uh, who you are and a little bit about your film. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say how awesome everyone's film was. That was just amazing to see the different um, varieties and just experiences. But um, so I'm really interested in um, bridging perspective and coming from a multicultural background uh, structure versus agency and how I define my role in that is what I'm exploring right now. So my particular film um, appearance is a nonfiction short film that uses culture jamming and cultural artifacts to highlight the lessons learned when tradition and language complicate our understanding of racism and discrimination, especially when, um, you know, when it's your family and culture who's the one who's doing the teaching. So thank you. Thank you. Wow. It's incredible. Um, so next we have 
the maker of bath and wind study. Hi, Shelby. Hi, um, I'm Shelby. And both bath and wind study are made in virtual reality and then filmed and uploaded as a video. Um, wind study specifically was a data visualization where I recorded my emotions and then the um, knots of wind, so wind speed over about a week. And then I compared them in my virtual reality visualization. And then for Bath, that's actually a combination of the real world and virtual reality that I did by tracing my actual bathroom in virtual reality. And then I, of course, traced myself in my own bathtub. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was a very powerful piece. I uh, really loved how the shower was coming down on the figure. And the next person that we're going to be meeting is the filmmaker of The Wrong Foley. Jamie, would you like to turn on your mic and introduce yourself? Talk about your film. Hi. Yeah, uh, my name is Jamie. Um, also, great work, everybody. Uh, you all did a fantastic job. Um, my work, Wrong Foley, was actually an assignment I did for a sound design class with Luke Bazania, and it was my first time actually working with Foley. And um, since this was an assignment where we had to create Foley work that was like completely opposite of what was shown in the film, I wanted to use like an everyday situation and make it really funny. Wonderful. Well, thank Thanks. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty uh, funny and bizarre. And speaking of funny and bizarre, uh, next we have the maker of Barrows of Death montage and dreams of dissonance episode one pilot hi john hello hello how's everyone doing today um so the the montage was with me and luke and i knew luke since like 2016 before he became a professor it was like around the summer i was actually with him and then i was supposed to like help him out see, make sure he's like in the semester but anyway aside from that it was really interesting like how I did the montage because i already knew like all his work and all that i wanted to see some improve i wanted to show him some improvements because like what happened in 2016 and a new adaption of my montage that i did from last time before then and um i would say like my motivation to making these is like I did some meditation. I was thinking like, what do I need to do to make my projects a lot more better? So I started working with more props and different types of builds. So that's what that from the montage. Now, when it comes to the episode, the pilot stuff, there was a full, a lot of experimentation before I actually got into it. And that itself was, it took a few tries, a month preparation and I made output. So that was really interesting. And it was all about building some type of collaboration to making those projects. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, you, John. You could really see the work in there. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the next person who's going to be uh, introducing herself, talking about her work, is the filmmaker who did um, Mitsu Moa no Jojo, My Heart is Looking for You, Swallowing and Nonamate, and What Did I Expect? So, Kelly. Hello. Uh, I just want to say I'm so impressed by everybody. Everybody's just so amazing. It's shocking. <laughs> um, so the inspiration behind most of my work is uh, human experience and feelings of longing and feelings of seeking intimacy, which is what inspired Mitsemoa no Jojo, which is a now old uh, word for my heart is looking for you. I come from uh, Mexico, so I always tend to do stuff that talks about missing uh, feelings and people and places. Uh, for, on the other hand, um, inanimate, it's more about questioning one's perspective of reality and society and for ourselves. And for what did I expect? Um, it's an installation piece that wants to bring awareness about uh, violence towards women and the missing cases that have been happening around San Diego, North County, the US, Mexico. It's just too alarming. <laughs> and I felt like I needed to talk about it. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the inspiration behind my work. OK, 
Okay, thank you so much for telling us about your work. Well, our next filmmaker has a wide berth of, of styles in the two films we've programmed. Uh, let's meet the maker of Ascension and Pizza Time, Ben Smelkovich. Hey, you got it. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ben Smelkovich, and I find it absolutely fascinating that these two films um, are the ones that made it into this media <laughs> festival because they came, they were made at totally different times. Um, I made Pizza Time last uh, year, um, Professor Petrisco's class, and it was my first time making a narrative film where I was in full control of it. I had done some short films being like a DP, helping out some friends with their own projects, but this was the first one that I got to do personally. And pretty much everything went wrong, um, but continually, you know, showing it with friends, family, colleagues, uh, pizza time just it gives it, it taps into like that old nostalgic like joy of like old funny dumb youtube videos that we all love so much so i'm really proud of that piece and then ascension was a piece that i actually made this year also in professor patrisco's class um and it was it's very much like 10 steps down the road um i've been doing more video work i've made more short films and it's I've, whereas before I hadn't even made a narrative film of my own, now it's like, all right, now I have a few under my belt. What do I do next? And I had actually just finished and um, shared one of my most abstract films um, in one of my other classes. And then I got a note from uh, Professor Petrisco. was like, hey, your last film was great. And she's like, but what would be even more abstract? And I showed her the other film. I was like, well, this is the most abstract I can do. What's like, what's even beyond this? Um, and she sent me some influences and I decided that I'm just going to make a film with simple elements, with strong emotional beats, but doesn't have a true story to it. And I'm so happy and so proud to be here and to be with all these other wonderful artists. And those are the two films I had. Thanks, Ben. Thank you so much. I loved uh, hearing about your work. And I also love the lighting that you have on your <laughs> and you're sad. Uh, so the next film maker that we're going to hear from is the person who made Memories. It's Valerie. Would you like to um, turn on your mic and tell us about your work? Um, hello. So um, when I created Memories, I was inspired by Billy Collins' poem, Forgetfulness. And I wanted to make something personal and sentimental. And so I kind of did the opposite of what he was talking about by searching, going back into memories. And in a way, looking at things that I may have forgotten, pictures that I forgot that I had, but also looking back at things that I still keep close to myself. And I just wanted it to be something warm and comforting. So that was inspiration for my piece. Okay, thank you. It was beautiful. I really liked it. Thanks, Valerie. I could I could see that being the beginning of a whole feature length film for some reason. I don't know why. Beautiful. Just opening the door. Um, our next film is Exile by uh, Thomas Rapetti. Hi, Thomas. Good evening, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. So this is the first book I've ever done. I also apologize for the really loud. It's Can you get closer to the mic? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Better, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so this is my first film ever. And it was, you know, inspired by the uh, semester of work that I've been doing exploring uh, virtual reality in uh, Professor Allard's class. And I was encouraged to uh, submit this piece by Professor Brower. Um, and it has just been kind of an exciting journey to really explore VR as a new medium for art, for you know, filmmaking, which is something I never actually saw myself doing before. And it's been an incredible journey. Um, the uh, film itself is actually based off of a, uh, scenes within a graphic novel that I've been writing in my uh, spare time called Exiles. And it shows different, you know, different landscapes, different um, uh, episodes, and then kind of finishes off with a, uh, a show of the uh, characters themselves. 
Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, our next filmmaker is the uh, maker of Beowulf, a loose retelling. <laughs> so, Jose, can you talk about your film? Hi, everyone. So, I made Beowulf, a loose retelling for AMB 418 with uh, Anna Patrisco, actually. And this project was a translation project, like a exercise. So just adapting a previous work, like a established work. And so I chose Beowulf. Um, I had been reading Beowulf for one of my other literature classes. And so I thought it was best to translate that. Um, for the actual goal of my piece, I wanted to capture the feeling of home video and specifically going back to when we were little and playing with toys. And so uh, I also wanted to lean into just like the homemade aspect of it. Just have it be all roughly done with like some uh, elements of uh, high art and low. Uh, I saw one of the comments saying that it was a, a, a clear contrast between low art and high art. And I thought that was the best way to describe it. Um, this piece was actually just really fun to make, honestly. It just brought me back to like childhood playing with toys. And um, yeah, basically, uh, that's it. That's it. Hey, great, great. great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We have one more. Yes. And finally, <laughs> the maker of the film Need Destroyed, Leslie Rodriguez. Hi, Leslie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm happy to be here um, for this. Um, film, what I really wanted to focus on was on the threat of industrial development on our land and how that has impacted us for, well, that has impacted our environment for like as long, for a long time. And I think I started to notice more of it because it's happening um, near my neighborhood. And I, I stopped one day um, to this favorite place near my house where I, I loved hiking. And all of a sudden it was closed off. They were, um, they were making the land like more flat. They were destroying the mountain. Um, and I, that was just really, like really difficult to see. Um, so I started thinking about questions like, like whose need is this um, to create more industrial development and like who is it benefiting because there's more building of, of structures of homes, but then we're still um, left with high rates of homelessness. So um, yeah, just questioning who this is benefiting and then the threat that it's bringing to the land and the environment. Okay, thank you so much. It's a very powerful piece and very important, I think, for our times, especially in Southern California. So I want to thank everybody uh, for making such wonderful films and also for joining us. Um, so now we're going on to our awards ceremony and we'll be introducing um, our award givers who will then uh, hand out the awards. And at the end, we will have the audience award. So uh, balloting is still open if you haven't done that yet. Yeah, thanks, Christine. You know, being chosen for a competitive festival is an honor unto itself. I always, whenever I get into a decent festival, I put those wings on the on the thing and say official entry into the competition. Um, the jury has selected special awards for works we think is exemplify original and innovative approaches to content form and technique. Jury members and media professionals have been invited to present these awards. Right, so uh, we're going to kick it off with Anna Petrisco. Um, Anna is a professor of media and she will announce the award for best experimental film. So, Anna. Good evening, everybody. An experimental filmmaker goes against convention, pushing the medium of film in unexplored and surprising ways. Just because a film is experimental doesn't mean that it won't make us feel often deeply and connect emotionally. In fact, in a, to be able to be innovative yet still tell a compelling and visceral story is quite an achievement. 
And now we have the winner of Best Experimental Film. <laughs> the winner is Appearance by Deja Mark. Um, and Deja, would you like to just say something again? <laughs> I'm all, yes, this was very unexpected. But, uh, thank you. Um, this is actually my first film festival. And I want to say thank you to Professor Why Not, who guided me through this project <laughs> last semester. And then um, Professor Safe, who said, Okay, I was hesitant to enter to this film festival, but he's like, why not? And I was like, you know what, why not? So <laughs> thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'd like to introduce alumnus and three-time prize winner, Christopher Cox, who'll be giving the award for best sound design. Hello, everyone. So if the famous words of George Lucas hold true, the sound and the music of any film is usually 50% and arguably one of the most important parts. With that said, I can safely say that tonight's winner certainly delivers on this sentiment in a fun and clever way. So for best sound design, the winner is Jamie Bond for Wrong Foley. I actually was not expecting that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just uh, thank you to Luke Bazania for teaching me uh, sound design and for um, giving me that chance to learn um, what I did. And uh, thank you to my family for supporting me throughout my, uh, my art journey. And uh, thank you to all the students who um, I became friends with along this journey. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Congrats. And now I'd like to reintroduce someone you've been seeing here and there. Christine Diekman will give the award for best special effects. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. So it's in this little, I guess I got to keep it here. It's inside of this little thing. I'm so <laughs> pleased to be able to give the award to one of our most prolific and innovative students. Uh, their work creates a world all unto its own. And so the award for special effects, I wish I could do a special effect in order to give this award, but it's a card. The award for special effects goes to John Thor for Dreams of Dissidents, episode one. Wow. <laughs> that, yeah, the so many effects that were in there. It's, it's just really awesome. Um, when I started doing my effects, I, I um, back in like 2011, I didn't even know how to do After Effects or anything. I had like no, any skill with it. And then it's like years later, it's like over to development. But I do need to thank everyone who was involved, like uh, Brad, I would say, uh, William, Chris, Chris was supportive. He was there, but he, and then some, and everyone else that was there as well. Um, I got to thank everyone else in the future projects too. So much appreciated with Brian, if he's in the stream, and Jedekite as well. <clears throat> Thank you, Jonathan. Congratulations. Oh. Yay. And uh, now. <laughs> oh, no. Where are oh, we? No. Well, that's you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pleased to introduce Shannon Pringle. Shannon is the director of the CSU Media Arts Festival, and uh, she's going to present the award for Best Cinematography and also just tell you a little bit about um, what's going on with the CSU Media Arts Festival. So, Shannon. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and congratulations to all of the entrants and finalists and winners, and I am so happy for you. Before I give out my award, I just wanted to take a moment to express how impressed I was with all of your work. It is so clear that you all have worked so hard on these different projects and have a range of skills and talents. And I encourage you to submit your work to the Media Arts Festival as well. That deadline is May 23rd. 
So you have time, it's free to submit. It's a system-wide festival for all CSU students. And uh, we have prizes and a screening in the fall. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you can go to mediaartsfestival.org. That's easy to remember, I hope. Or you can contact Professor Berman or Professor Diekman to get information about how to submit. All right. And now on to the award for best cinematography. I'm so excited. <laughs> So this award is being presented to a group of works that leave stunning impressions of landscape and people and color and lightness and darkness and distortion and everything and just so impressive. So without further ado, da -da -da. Oh. Oh, have our nice little award. And this is going to the collection of work of Kelly Ibarra. So let me make sure that I get everything right. So we've got My Heart is Looking for You, Anonymate, Swallowing, and What Did I Expect? Congratulations, Kelly. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's it's so funny. Every time I have a, uh, apply for this festival, so I'm like, I hope I win something. <laughs> <laughs> and it really means a lot to me. I put a lot of heart in what I do. And I just, I had a mentor that passed away uh, recently and he was the one that introduced me to the beautiful art of filmmaking mm -hmm. and I just want to thank him his name is just in every single work that I do and I want to thank my family because they're in the chat every single time that I participate in this <laughs> and I I just am very grateful and I'm really happy to be experiencing this event with so many talented people it's amazing Thank you so much. Congratulations, Kelly. Yay. Um, congratulations, Kelly. And uh, one more uh, shout out to uh, Shannon, who works um, on the System Wide Media Arts Festival, which everyone who entered this festival should enter the Media Arts Festival because you'll get to meet and hang out with the best and the brightest from all over the CSU. There's also summer arts where I have had the privilege of teaching, uh, coordinating in, and Shannon is involved with that. Great, great summer programs, including, I think there was, was did they have the thing where the Foley guys who did Game of Thrones were there? Yes. John, <laughs> if they ever come back, although you probably know yeah. all that. Anyway, I would like to introduce esteemed media professor, not steamed, but esteemed, media professor Tony Allard, who will be giving the award for best emerging media. Tony? Tony? Did we lose him? Oh, there he is. Oh, we can't uh, hear you. There you go. Uh, can't hear you. There you go. I'm unmuted later. There we are. Okay, I'm gonna hold on for a second. Yeah, it's not like I haven't done this eight thousand times in the last <laughs> how many years? <laughs> uh, <laughs> good timing. Yeah. So um, for best emerging media, you know, it, it it takes something to be out on that edge worker uh, place that avant. Uh, point of view and just just keep going and don't look back and don't look around and don't look to somebody for what you're going to do and so i've uh, i've been making my way through this book vein of gold um, by julia cameron and i came across this quote i think that really uh, uh, it lands on it. the unfolding of the unexpected becomes the energy that drives you. You discover how thirsty you are for exploration without analysis. 
you feel strangely at home in a place you can't define. You are truly creating. So, with that said, best emerging media artists and drum roll, please. Yeah. We're off of the prophecy you can aim all your phones at the at the ad hat and the prophecy will come through so for best emerging media goes to mess <laughs> <laughs> really want to thank you know everyone who's helped me up you know uh professor allard in the digital meeting course uh, professor Breyer, who you know pushed me to actually make a submission and oh my goodness i wow <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm utterly speechless thank you very much everyone yeah you're welcome congratulations awesome. you're welcome. thank you thomas okay <laughs> And it is uh, my pleasure to introduce my colleague once again, Jonathan Berman, and Jonathan will present Best Fiction Narrative. Thank you, Christine. You know, I always like when um, people are like, oh, documentaries, but what about a movie, like a movie movie? <laughs> <laughs> and even though I love documentaries and I got embroiled in their charm and I still love them, I also love movie movies. So let's talk about best fiction narratives, shall we? I'd like to read the winner. If I could have a drum roll, I could read it. Oh, thank you, drummer. Okay. A little, it's a little, hold on, there's a lot of glue on here. Could I have a drum roll, please? Thank you. Okay. And the winner for best fiction narrative goes to uh, no goes to uh, Ben Smilkovich. Pizza time! It's pizza time! <laughs> it's pizza time! Um, I it's so funny because I too have like I've started to learn this past semester like the love of like documentary and like you know you know putting something out there and making people you know, think about things, but also every now and then we just need to see something just totally out there. We need to see a pizza rolling down <laughs> a sidewalk into a duck pond on the side of a freeway. So I'm honored. It's a privilege to be here. I'm so you know thankful for my younger sister, uh, Steffi, and my younger brother, Eddie, who were both integral in making this uh, film happen. Both of them rolled many pizzas you'd be surprised how many frozen pizzas it takes to make a three minute short film <laughs> um they rolled many pizzas down sidewalks and then Steffi, of course was acting it also my mom who played the voice of mom in the background so <laughs> thank to all of you for helping making this film possible and you know i'm honored it's fantastic thank you so much congratulations so uh now we're moving on to our second to last award um, and this award, uh, award is being given by uh, Jeff Ray, and I'd like to introduce him. He's a digitally, digital based mixed media artist and professor of media. And Jeff will give the award for best new voice. The Fumes Award is a very prestigious award. And not only does it award the most money, uh, but more importantly, it honors new promise, promising faces in, in media. We are so impressed with the student that we are excited to find out what they will be doing in the future. The student is so very creative, prolific, and incredibly talented. I am very honored and excited to announce the Fumes Award for Best New Voice goes to Isabella Tabornol for My Weird Obsession. Meet Bella and Bella's Modding Adventure, Episode 1, which is a podcast and you must subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Just 
thank you so much. I'm just so honored. I'd like to give special thanks to my family that's watching right now, especially my brother Brandon for helping me film my dance challenge videos that you see in the video for my obsession. My my mom and my dad who are watching downstairs right now. My extended family, both here in the US and the Philippines. And I'd also like to give thanks to all my professors over the years, especially Professor Ray, Berman, Why Not, Vizania, and Golden. And just, uh, just uh, also special thanks to Sega and RGG Studios for making some pretty cool games the Yakuza modding discord for giving me tools for the modding adventures episode one and the everlasting friends suju fandom around the world everyone's submissions this year were so great this is my first media festival and just thank you everyone thank you not your last yeah congratulations Okay, everybody, we're now moving on to the audience award. I am glancing at my phone because the, um, the numbers are coming in. And again, you can look in the YouTube chat window. We can put it there again and link to our ballot on your computer or your mobile device. We'll take one more minute to finish up voting. And then we will, um, Professor Berman and I will announce the audience award. So one minute to finish up your voting. Tonight's festival is brought to you by Cal State San Marcos, <laughs> providing quality education in North County, San Diego. For over 20 years, Cal State San Marcos. Who would have thought a chicken would have turned into the educational institution it is? <laughs> okay, it looks like we have more votes coming in, so. Can't, uh, we can't announce it till uh, our boat's closed. We probably have 20 more seconds to vote. Work your hacking magic. Yeah, get it <laughs> out there. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to be closing the vote. Uh, and we're closing it. And we have to wait for the uh, final. Okay, I got the okay. I don't know what that means yet. <laughs> Sorry, <Let me> everybody. <laughs> right, Jonathan, I need a little joke here. Jonathan, do you? <laughs> have a okay. Little, need something. Um, okay, we have it. How, All right, we oh, have it. We oh, have it. We how have many it. hipsters <laughs> does it take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> Uh, none because they don't um they don't have lights no it's it's a number that you don't know <laughs> okay all right so we are ready now to um to announce the audience award and can we have a drum roll a nice big drum roll please and now the audience award goes to bella's modding adventure wow Yay, everybody! Yay. So, Bella, I guess you need to come back and <laughs> yeah. join us More. again, right? No question. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know what to say this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just <laughs> thank you. I'm just hoping for, I'm just hoping the best for myself for the future. And I'm also, I just also want to say that everyone, everyone else, I loved your submissions too. Everything, everything today, I'm just so happy. This is, this really made my day. <laughs> okay. Well, congratulations. Great. Congrats, Esmeralda.
Yeah, the audience is the real deal. I mean, that's, those are the people who choose your work, so congratulations. So now, thank you for everyone, uh, to everyone for coming tonight. Thank you all. Um, drive carefully. Oh, wait, you're already home. <laughs> so we'll see you next year live, we hope. <laughs> Congratulations to everybody. And if you just want to turn on your mics, give your subs a big hand. Big thanks to everybody. Go ahead, turn on your mics. Let's Woo! just hear some, hear some love, right? Yeah! <laughs> Bring it, bring it. Yeah, all right. It's Good party. job, everybody. <laughs> um, the show is, is recorded. It will be on the YouTube channel, so you can go see it later and send all your friends to see it, okay? All right. Dance party. Woo! Thank you, everybody. This has been a long everyone. presentation of Cal State San Marcos' 18th <laughs> Annual Student Media Awards. Okay. San Marcos, California. And you will be contacted if you got an award to send, uh, they'll send money and um, money. a certificate to you. Our Bitcoin's doing well, so I think we can pay them, right? <laughs> yeah, I think mean, not really. <laughs> oh, no. Did something out. happen that I didn't hear about? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Good Have work. Have a good night. Great work. Thank you, our jury and nice award givers, too. And thank you, Albert, so much for all your expertise. Thanks, Albert. Thanks, Bye, everyone. All. Bye. Enter the Media Fest with Yeah, Shannon. enter the Media Festival, everybody. Yeah, everyone. All of you. <laughs> I just want to know. Thank top you is, yeah. Everyone. I love your sound effects. Shannon, do we have a link? <laughs> yes, I'll put it in the chat again and okay. uh, you can forward it. Okay, great. Bye. <laughs> Let's get some music. Yeah. <laughs> For those who are going to hang out at the after party. <laughs> I just want to know, is like Thomas at a bar? Like, where are you? <laughs> yeah. You're not, you're not invading the capital, Thomas, are you? <laughs> um, okay. I'd bet some, brewery. brewery. A brewery, yeah, I think, yeah. Some of tonight's music was composed by alumnus Christina Kalchev. Thank you, Christina, wherever you are. Yeah, that was great. I loved everybody's work. Really loved everybody's work. Yeah. Hey. Albert, Albert, maybe you could put that on the YouTube side, the uh, Media Arts Festival. Shannon, thank you again for joining us. Thanks, jury, judge and jury. Yeah, thank Jeff, you, jury. thank you for teaching, Tony. Thank you for your teaching as well. Um, shows how, what a great job you guys are doing. This is the after party, I guess. Yeah. And Isabella, great job. I don't know anything about modding. I have no idea. <laughs> it's so incredible. So, Me either. I was like, what am I even listening to? Keep going. To? Now, now you know about it. It's, it's a tutorial as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. One, of the, one of the things I know from listening to podcasts is it's just all about content. Just you want to like see it every week or so. Yeah, hear it. Hear it. Hear well, it. with hers, see it's it. Seeing too. it. I know. Yeah. I can't wait for the next.